Welcome to The Exclusive. I'm your host, Sharon Tharp. I'm really excited because this is our first Sunday episode where we'll be breaking down the game every week, catching up on what's going on, talking about live feeds, talking about any drama, any inside scoop that I know, what's going on in social media, and basically everything else in between. And if you're looking for strict strategy talk, that might not be the podcast for you, but we will be talking strategy. We'll also be talking a little bit more about like the silliness that is Big Brother. Um, so today I'm joined by my friend Sin. Sin, how are you doing? I'm doing good, Sharon. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. This episode was not much, but we'll get into it. Um, Sin is a huge Big Brother fan. We talk about Big Brother all the time, and he knows a lot about Big Brother and remembers everything. And if you guys know me or you'll get to know me, I forget a lot of things. So it's great to have him here. And I do want to say spoiler alert for people that do watch only the episodes. We will be talking about the live feeds and results of the veto comp. So just keep that in mind um, before we dive into the season. Yeah, but Sharon, before we get started, given that the podcast is called The Exclusive, don't you want to tell us more about the party you went to like on premiere night with Oz and all of these old Big Brother players who like were there? Like, is there anything like behind the scenes, you know, you want to share with us? Um, What happened at the party? Honestly, it was a pretty positive party. There was no drama, at least none that I saw. And mm -hmm. I hate, I wish there were. I wish I had some good. I like, wish there was drama. Well, yeah, because it's it's fun, right? But I didn't see any drama. I Most of the buzz was about whether Sari was going to be on the show or not. And so... Um, and there was a lot of mingling, like the Big Brother 24 cast was pretty much hanging out in one section. Taylor was like nearly impossible to get to. Obviously, everyone wanted to speak with her. So I did get to say hi later in the night, but it was really fun. And a lot of a lot of people that watch my content came up to me, which was really cool. Thank you, guys. And then obviously, when Sari came on the screen, the entire bar went nuts and it was insane. Um, what else happened? Oh, the, the night before there was drama. So the night of there was nothing. But the night before, Angela from 90 Day Fiance, apparently, you know, it was a lip sync battle. And apparently back at the hotel, she like got in a fight with her backup dancer and there was like blood. And I don't know. It was yeah. so if there was any drama, it was from the lip sync battle on Tuesday night. But so unfortunately, nothing crazy happened at the premiere party. But it was it was a good time. And I had fun and I had some really good conversations and got to catch up with like a lot of people I haven't seen so yeah it was a nice time yeah that's cool like less so the blood and fighting although it's like fun to like hear about even though I have no idea who this person is I don't know who Angela oh you is. have to watch 90 Day Fiance because she's, I don't she's an icon oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> well okay back to Big Brother let's dive into the season yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> before we start you know it's day five so we're getting to know the house guests what would you say are your overall thoughts just on the cast itself and like what's been going on Okay, right. so first thoughts is that like this season is like so much fun so far. All right, number one, obviously Suri is on the cast, which is amazing because like I I, I watched Survivor and I've watched Survivor for like a while now, so I know Suri, I know her from all of her shows. So seeing her like on the cast is like so insane because it's like not like other shows where it's like oh you have an edited product and then it's like everything is like cut out. You actually get to see Suri like work in live action her like maneuvering around the house and like you get to see her like talk about like her past seasons of survivor and like actually like game in person which is so cool to like watch yeah i agree with that i think the the first five days have been fun i think the cast is really energetic they're yeah. gaming already you know there's no there's no crazy drama or anything but there is a lot yeah. of running around so i'm i'm enjoying it so far i have yeah. high hopes yeah like so far this cast like loves to game they've been gaming non-stop since night one and it's like every day there's like something new happening that's like you think one like day one like something's happening day two like something completely different is happening and the entire structure of the house is like just so like I wouldn't say it's fluid because there are two sides but like the events that are happening are like so like messy and fun at the same time so it's like fun to watch for sure um, I guess let's get into like the rundown of the current, you know, power dynamics. Um, at the end of the premiere, we obviously had four people who were nominated. We had Jared, Corey, Felicia, and Kirsten. Um, and then tonight we saw Riley won win the HOH, which I didn't realize everyone was throwing it because a lot of people said in the preseason they wanted to win. But, you know, people like Jack, who are close to Riley, like that made sense. But it definitely seemed like a lot of people threw it. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll go, like, to be fair, it could be that, like, for example, they do the competition and they, like, lose and they're just, like, they want to save face. They're, like, oh, actually, like, I meant to throw that competition, you know, because, like, yeah, I don't suck that bad. I just, like, you know. Yeah, it revisionist was- history in the DR. It's tale yeah. as old as time on this show. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, R- Riley ends up winning HOH and instead of, you know, nominating two people, she gets to save two people. Um, Sin, do you want to talk a little bit about what happened there? Yeah, so... Because it's scramble week and all, she got to save two people instead of nominate two people. And Riley talked about on the feeds how that is actually it's like a sort of good thing for her game because she doesn't have to like single nominees out. It's like she has she just like gets to save people. So that's why that was one of her major like reasons as to why she wanted to win because she has all of the like power that comes with the HOH being that like, oh, she gets to make all these connections with people without the blood on her hands because she doesn't have to like single-handedly put people on the block. So she thought that like, oh, this HOH should be a fun and easy week because like she doesn't have to make messy moves. Although like we clearly saw or we throughout the week that that was not the case. So... <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so she ended up saving Jared and Corey, right? Um, yeah. Both of whom we saw tonight had conversations with her. Yeah. Um, we didn't see the extent of the conversations, yes. to be honest. They were kind yeah. of short. Yeah, and something important to note is that in the episode, um, they didn't mention this, but one of the major reasons why, like, Riley and Corey managed to connect was because Corey, like, told Riley about, like, his relationship with uh, Zach, who is his brother, and that uh he was also on survivors so sharing that secret with riley was like one of the main reasons that actually like solidified their bond more so than like just game stuff because they initially like didn't connect so much until that conversation that they had yeah they we also didn't see like they definitely tried to paint kirsten as like super messy like she was starting that alliance when it really wasn't even her that i don't even know how to pronounce it that five person alliance that Luke, I guess, was in that Luke named or whatever. But um, it really, I feel, I feel bad for her because she's kind of, you know, in a corner mm-hmm. right now, and I don't think it's necessarily all warranted. What do you yeah, think? like, like, all right, so I, I'm two minds of this. I think Kirsten like was being messy the first few, you know, hours of the game, but like I think they blew it way out of proportion. Like, yes, she was gaming hard, but like in a fun way. She's just like trying to get to know people. You know, it's not like. She was making, you know, like bad decisions or like doing something overtly bad. I think it's a combination of people just wanting a scapegoat. And like, obviously, Jared also being on that block made people like Suri and like want to, you know, like just protect him furthermore rather than Kirsten. So she just like took any opportunity to like try to get Jared safe, which is why Kirsten became the scapegoat of the house. Yeah, that's actually exactly what it is. She became the scapegoat. You know, if Jared wasn't up or Sari, you know, if they weren't in that situation, it, it probably would have played out differently. But it was like at that point, a name's out there and it's not Jared. OK, let's go with it. So that's kind of what happened. Um, the other dynamics, again, spoiler alert, but they played the POV competition over the over the weekends. Um, Riley obviously played Kirsten, Felicia, Felicia, and then it was Blue, Hassam and Cameron. And Riley picked Sari to host. And Hassam ended up winning that. So yeah. that's kind of the current power of the house. And from the looks of it, we're pretty sure that veto is not being used. And we'll get into why. Um, but yeah, the Kirsten is, it's not looking good for her this week. No, and I'm so annoyed because like she's been so fun to watch. Like whenever she's in a conversation with someone on the feeds, it's just like she's like full force like, in that conversation she's not like afraid to game there are some people on the cast who like you know they game but like they're not as engaged in like actually playing the game kirsten is just like full force trying to play the game which is fun to watch and i want to see her stay in the game but like so it's so annoying to see her like potentially go out this week week one yeah but who knows there might be some twist we'll talk about it later but she could be back and she's my freaking winner pick so i need her back if she goes home that's really bad for me um (laughs) Yep. But let's get into like the big headlines of the last five days. And most of these are not from the show tonight because, again, we did not see much. Um, I would say the biggest thing that we have to talk about is the split house. You know, there's basically two big alliances at this point, which is super fun because we have a couple moles in there. 
Um, but I'll go over. So let's go over the one side of the house. We have Riley, who is clearly, you know, the HOH. She's kind of teamed up with Jag and Blue to create this little core group called the Crowd Control. And then they built sort of an onion, not sort of an exact onion alliance outside that. Right. So we have they brought in Cameron and Matt into a five and they're called the handful. And then outside that, they're like, you know what, let's bring in three more people to protect us with an eight person alliance. And that's where we got Jared, Corey and America. And so that's kind of that side of the house. And do you want to explain kind of the Suri side of the house? Yeah. So the one thing that they didn't notice, which is this thing that no one in the house knows, is that Jared is Suri's son. <laughs> so Jared being included in this alliance is like an ace up Suri's sleeve because now Suri just has like a landscape of who is aligned with who. She knows who the other side of the house is and she knows who isn't included. And because she knows who isn't included, she can pinpoint exactly who she should include in her side of the house to make like a sort of counter lines. Because like initially before Suri found out that there was that whole other side, she was considering people like Blue and America who she wanted to work with. But then Jared tells Suri that there's this whole other alliance that you're not a part of. So like Suri's like, oh, these people who I wanted to work with initially are in that alliance. Let me look at who isn't in that alliance to, to work with them. So obviously, Suri and Jared are like very tight with Izzy because she knows their secret. So that's like a three. Then Suri is like connected to Felicia, who's like on their side. And they are all close with Haisim, who won the veto, which is a good thing for them because they have like sort of power on their side. And then they have like people like Red, who is in the comic room with them, which is like the back bedroom. And they have people like Mikol, or is it Mikol? Whatever, Mikol, who is also working with them. And am I missing one person? I think, and Bowie, who, yes, <laughs> is very forgettable. She's there. <laughs> She's oh, never Bowie. on the feeds. <laughs> She, I, she, I, she is in the house yes but like you never see her and when you see her she's just like oh hi i'm here in australian you know like <laughs> hey. we also never see luke luke is never mm-hmm. uh, never on the feeds yes there are a few people like I, we're, i'm not sure if it's me like avoiding them because they're boring or if it's just like they're boring so production is like not showing them like people like luke aren't on the feeds much like even matt barely on um uh, yeah Bowie. America is in there both America yeah. yeah it's like a ton of people who like maybe I'm the problem and I'm avoiding them but like you know no 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 every time I switch the feeds yeah. it's always like the Suri contingent and then the Riley contingent that's it yeah that's all yeah. it is those um, are like the major like power factions in the house and the funny thing is Suri's side knows that the other side exists because of Jared even though not all the people in that side know that Jared is their mole, they know that other side exists, but Riley's side has no idea how solid uh, Suri's side is. So there, so Jag and Riley and Blue are thinking, oh, like we're going to steamroll this game. Like we're going to win all the competitions and no one even thinks we're working together. And worst case scenario, if Suri or someone wins the competition, we can just get them to nominate like Luke or someone. But they all know who is working with who. So if they win a competition, they can just nominate two people from Riley's side and target them. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see who wins HOH next week. I think that'll really matter. Um, I do want to get into a couple specific people. We have to talk about Izzy. I mean, personally, anytime Izzy is on the feeds, I'm watching. I love Izzy. Great TV character, great feeds. What are your thoughts on Izzy? And, And what are your thoughts as Izzy as like a, you know, an ally to Suri. Cause I was worried at first. Right. Yeah. But little by little, I'm like, okay, she is loyal. She's messy, yeah. but Suri's going to have to reel her in, but Suri can do that. And she's loyal. Yeah. Izzy is so fun because she's messy and she plays the game. And she's also like funny as a character. Cause like she calls Suri mom, which is like funny, but like, it's also like cute in a way, but like, you know, it's like, she calls Suri to Jared like, oh yeah, let's see what mom has to say, like referring to Suri, which is funny. So initially I was like, oh wait, Izzy might expose them, but it doesn't seem like that's her intention. She, as of now, obviously it's like day five, she fully intends on going to the final three with Suri and Jared, which, you know, good for them, but like, yeah. The one thing about Izzy though, (laughs) is she loves to overplay and she's super paranoid. So that's actually like, her paranoia had like a sort of impact on the week because, because, because. So 
initially the nominees were Felicia and Kirsten. So the idea was fine, Kirsten is gonna go home. But there was a potential of a for, for a renom to happen and a backdoor to happen. So we had the conversation with um with Riley earlier in the, in the week. And in that conversation, uh, Riley said that she was considering Luke as their potential renom if one of the nominees win the veto, and he'd be like a backdoor option. So that's what Sri thought. But then after the veto picking ceremony, when um uh, when Riley picks Sri as a host, Sri gets sort of nervous because she starts to think that wait maybe Riley is like, I'd like making me keeping her safe exactly before targeting her. And then she does this to Izzy and then Izzy feeds into her paranoia. And then they both like start this cycle of like paranoia. And then they're like fully convinced that Sri is like the backdoor target, even when she's like nowhere near being nominated, which is so funny. And then uh, basically when Heisem wins veto, even though like there was initially a like, conversation about like, oh, I'm going to save Felicia. Sri like tells him, no, you can't use the veto because I want to make sure that I'm not going to get backdoored. So yeah. that's why we're like, oh, Kristen is going to, go home probably this week because any chance of the veto being used was completely washed by by that whole mess with Izzy and Suri and their paranoia about being backdoored. I will say though, like Suri could have spiraled more like, whoa, yeah. like because Izzy really was like, it's happening, like freaking yeah. out. And I and I think Suri, I, I freaked out for her at the moment. I'm like, don't don't do it. Don't do it. Don't like fall into this. And she did. She did for a little bit, but she pulled herself back. And I think Jared also calmed her down a little bit. So that could have been disastrous, to be honest, because yeah. it could have gotten back to Riley. Although I don't know what's going on today or at this moment, you never know. But for now, it seems like it's okay. Um, But yeah, let's also talk about just Jared being, you know, this this mole in the middle of these two alliances we learned today or during the episode that it you know Izzy's the one that knows you know we some people speculated you know maybe maybe Corey knows and he's not letting on but no it doesn't seem like Corey knows at all (laughs) yeah so the reason why this season unlike other seasons is like interesting is because usually like let's say when the HOH wins and they form their like shell of an alliance around them there isn't any incentive for anyone in that alliance to like leak information because they're safe. It's week one. You're not connected to anyone. But because Jared is playing with his mom, obviously he's going to tell her all the information that he gets because like, why wouldn't he? So just because Jared exists in this game with Sri, it's invented or managed to sort of make like this split house because you can build two sides without the risk of one side finding out because you know who's in who's in the in alliance and who's in the out alliance. And that sort of helped, you know, make that structure, which is why this game so far has been so fun. The one thing about Jared I'm worried about, and maybe he's changed his mind on this, is that he he's very much like anti the family style alliance and, and already wants to win the next HOH and target them. And I'm not sure that's the best move for him because he is in a good spot. He could play this out maybe a little bit longer, like let someone else in his alliance win and do that. But again, things can change. That's probably a little too early to say. Um, but I do want to talk about Heisen. He won POV. You know, he's working with Suri and them. Izzy has this brilliant plan to bring Corey into their alliance, steal him from the family style alliance, bring him over. Corey has a conversation with Jared. It's going well. You know, the, there's a really funny feeds moment where Jared kind of plays like, hey, like, who's Suri? Like, and then Corey is like, oh, she's a top 10 survivor player. And you just see Jared's face light up and like him trying to contain his smile it's a great moment i'm sure they're going to show it on the show this week but yeah so Corey's getting pulled over meanwhile at the exact moment in another room heisen's in there basically saying he hates Corey. i mean not in those words he he, i think he forgot his his name and was like whatever i don't even care about that person (laughs) um so that's gonna that's gonna be interesting how that plays out the Corey of it all because he's not I don't want to say he's not well liked, but you know, people are suspecting, like people are obsessed of him, right? Yeah. So the thing with Corey is that many people want to, like, okay, so not like, let me re- rephrase. People want to work with him in Street Side. Those people being Izzy and Jared, because they think like they can pull him in as a number and sort of have him work against 
family style, which is Riley's house's side of the game alliance thing. Yes. So <laughs> but the problem with that is many people on Suri's side don't trust Corey at all. Haisim is like the main one. Suri also doesn't tr- like trust him as much because she finds that he knows a ton about her and is worried that he's going to like push her as a target, which sh- fair point. Which we saw in the episode tonight. Which so. we saw. I don't think he wants to target her like right now, but like going forward in the game, having Corey out is beneficial for Siri because that's one less person who can, who can like suss her out and make her seem as a bigger threat. Yeah, I think Corey, you know, he wants a fun season. Like he said, he wants a season where Sari does well and all this. But like, you can also see Corey down the road being like, I want the title of getting Sari Fields out of the Big Brother house. So yeah, he's got to go soon, which I hate to say, because, you know, I like Zach and, and I like Corey. But yeah, he's just a danger to Sari's game and probably other people's Um, right now. You know, that could obviously change. Yeah. But what are you yeah. thinking about? Jared and Ceri's whole dynamic I really think it's like anytime we see them on the screen together it's really fun and honestly I did tear up I, I'm more of an emotional person so that's not out of the ordinary for me but you know when Ceri's talking about playing with her son like it's just cool I don't know it's cool what do you think I mean it's fine like okay so <laughs> it's, it's fine fun. <laughs> all right it's it's fun to watch them like in the game because like Ceri is obviously like very well versed in like playing these types of games and jared is obviously like a first time player so seeing their whole like dynamic where at certain times jared is like overplaying and is talking too much but he still has story to like check him back exactly like if you're doing too much like calm down don't do this don't do that which is good to have but at the same time because jared is in such a better position in the house being that he's in two alliances he has information that Siri doesn't have so it's like Jared is trying to tell his mom no you're not the backdoor target but Siri who's this like well versed there is like my intuition is right I am the target but Jared who has information is like no you're not the target so it's like fun to watch uh, because like you don't really see that dynamic much yeah no I agree and I think she did pull him back and he's pulling her back a little bit from Izzy. I think they're good balance, but I mean, it is an advantage, right? Like going yeah. in there with someone, obviously you're related to, like there is zero doubt in that. Um, even if it was a friend, there might be a zero, you know, a yeah, and like, no doubt, but that's her family. Like there is no doubt. Yeah. And like that advantage is apparent because like Suri's side wouldn't exist as it is now had Jared not been in the game. So Anyone saying like, oh, it's a disadvantage that they're going to get targeted? No. Whatever disadvantage it is, is negated by whatever advantage it is. Like the whole reason why they have an alliance now that hasn't been exposed is because Jared is able to act as a mole and leak information. Yeah, I'm excited to see how that plays out. Um, There's a couple other people I do want to talk about. Cameron being one he was kind of quiet in the be- I hate to say this now but he's kind of quiet in the beginning but you know as soon as Riley became HOH he got close with her he's now in that you know handful alliance and the the bigger alliance he just talked a lot um I don't know much of what he was saying but he, he was giving me like you know people were saying HOH itis when he doesn't even he's not even HOH uh what do you what are your thoughts on Cameron yeah I will say whenever I see Cameron on the feeds I like Change. Away. <laughs> yeah because it's like he's boring well not like he's boring but he's just like i don't know anyways so uh <laughs> i will say he's sort of feeling himself because he's in an alliance even though he's like number one not in the inner circle of that but anyways like he's feeling himself because he's in that big alliance and he thinks he has like sway over the game and he's gonna steamroll and the way he talks to people it's like apparent that he thinks he's in a power position so that's like annoying but it's like, a, yeah it's a little condescension just like a hint of that right yeah and that's like one of the reasons why going forward if the other side wins he's like one of the names being thrown around of oh let's target him we don't trust him yeah um i do want to also we have to talk about felicia oh <laughs> Wait, um is this felicia time yes this is felicia time this is her segment of the podcast okay (laughs) so what are your thoughts on felicia the icon my thoughts my thoughts on felicia 
since the first second I was watching her on the feeds, I was like, I'm claiming Felicia. Like I like her stand card is mine, like for me. <laughs> because because it was so like night one, she was like talking to Siri about like Survivor, and she's like, she was like telling Siri, like, you know, on Survivor, like people go there and they eat bugs and stuff. Like, Siri's like, Yeah, yeah, they do. Like she was like teach telling Siri, like, oh, this is Survivor and this is what the show is, as if Siri hasn't played like for this is the show like four times before, which was funny. That's number one. One reason to stand her. Number two is her laugh. She keeps on laughing and it's so funny because she's so loud and she's like so like her laugh is so like infectious because it's so funny to watch. And there are like a ton of clips of her like laughing and like it just like spreads around the house and it's like so funny. Number three, okay. number three, the whole saga of Fel- Felicia and her microphones is like insane. So night day one, night one, she's in the toilet and she drops <laughs> she drops her microphone in the toilet she's like what's going on that's number one and apparently like, sometime across she also manages to like either break or drown another one of her microphones which is funny then last night they open up the backyard after the veto competition and she's like walking around the backyard she's like all good walking camera pans away from her then her microphone is still connected with like the, the camera feet exactly and then like we hear something happen we hear like a thud and like we hear like bubbling sounds <laughs> and the camera pans over to the hot tub and felicia like fell in like how jerry fell into pool felicia fell into the hot tub and her microphone like drowned and she's like help me help me then you have america on this side like you're not allowed to go in the hot tub production said so and that was my favorite like, part is- i mean yeah america running from off camera we're not allowed in the hot tub. Like, you know, Felicia dove in there. The poor woman just needs help getting out. Um, but yeah, so many good moments. Do you have any others? I mean, there's, she a, there's has a list. So many. She has her like, one-liners. Her one-liner. She's like, oh, those white heterosexual men are working with each other. Let's target them. And she like, oh my, she went up to Riley's HOH room and just like asked her, fully knowing that she's aligned with that side who your alliance is and the funny thing is riley tells her yeah i love jag i'm working with jag and blue and all the like <laughs> she's just so she has that power she has missed yeah like ma- like maybe we're looking at like a geesling scenario like felicia <laughs> geesling honestly like i'm here for it like she's amazing she's just like so funny on the feed she's like i don't know i love her she's amazing and you know, like I love Kirsten, but like the one good thing about Kirsten going is that Felicia stays. Yeah. Now it's because like you know she's gonna make it far. Like let's say even even if Sri's side gets steamrolled and they lose, we're gonna have Felicia for like five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, and I'm gonna be happy. So that's all I care about. Yeah, yeah. I feel like Sri, like this whole ha- this side of the house is just like a hodgepodge of people, but like they're all pretty loyal, right? Like Felicia. You got Izzy. I feel like Heisem, yeah, he he's a gamer a little bit. Like, I could see him maybe straying at some point. But, like, I don't know. Like, yeah. I feel like Suri is pretty well connected right now. Yeah, the thing with Suri is in all of her shows and all of her games, what she does is she builds, like, an army around her. And her army is, like, loyal to her. Whether it's on the Traitors or on Survivor, she builds, like, people who trust her implicitly like they don't even have to question her decision making and they just like ride for her there isn't really many games or many scenarios where like they feel like they don't trust her because but the one caveat being like it's important that Siri doesn't have a reputation of like being this big player which was why she's afraid of Corey like spreading that information yeah because on the traitors which was like her other show spoiler which she won she managed to build this group of people who had no suspicion ever that she was betraying them because no one knew who she was. No one knew who Siri was. So because they had no idea, she could just like make people work with her like implicitly. And it was just like so fun to watch, which is what she, it's a strategy that always gets her far in the game. So I also think it's because just her demeanor, like she's very disarming and she, listens more than she speaks which that the first five days in the house I've been watching the feeds and it's constantly people talking over each other 
it everyone's just waiting for their turn to talk no one's like even listening like if you saw the conversation with that large alliance whatever family style it was just blah blah blah, 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 blah like constant ping pong and no one was listening everyone was just like thinking about what they were going to say next and and chiming in and that's not Suri's game Suri's smart she knows let me sit back let me listen and then she connects with people on like a more personal level she's not always talking game and people are like oh that's just Suri she's the one who helped me with you know like even Kirsten and fixing her mic like she's just that kind of person where she's connecting in important ways that no one else is doing everyone just wants attention 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 and the, the benefit to Suri being on tv so many times is that she knows the camera's on her anyway she doesn't need to fight for the attention right yeah, <laughs> yeah like, that's one of the signatures for like a good big brother player is knowing when to like just sit back and listen like dan for example you just like connect with people by asking them about themselves rather than like you talking about yourself and that way like people feel connected to you because like you're listening to them and you like f- and they feel like you care about them and you don't like accidentally leak information you shouldn't because you're staying like reserved exactly um anyone else we missed on the cast that we wanted to touch on um I'm really liking what I'm seeing from Jag I obviously I'm a little more pro Suri side of the house but I feel like Jag is playing a really good social game he seems like very smart knows like very strategic but he's he's pulling back a little bit you know I think he's letting Riley kind of take the lead and kind of just being next to her I think Jag's in a good spot but what do you think about Jag? Yeah, the thing with Jag is that he's very much a game bot. Like he's like this onion alliance. Like layer one is this, layer two is this. Like he's he knows the game well. The problem though is that Riley keeps on associating herself publicly yes. with him. like the entire house knows that it's Riley and it's Jag and they're working together. So they've already been talking about like how Jag is with them and how they should potentially like nominate a Jag or a Riley if they win, which is why I'm sort of more mm. less like, like I'm confident in his game ability, but like his position is like very uh, tenuous at the moment. If yeah. Ed wins, he could be like nominated. I think, I think Jared sees that as well, that he's pretty dangerous in terms of his closeness with Riley. And if Riley's going on the block next week, or whatever i'm sure jag one of them or matt is going up with her so it'll be interesting to see um i want to move on and talk a little bit about just like you know some speculation about t- possible twists there were there was speculation that w- there was going to be an 18th house guest because there were allegedly 18 settings there were 18 beds i don't know i'm starting to lean towards there's no other house guest because what are they going to be in sequester for a million weeks uh, what do you think? Do you think we're going to see somebody? Yeah. So initially I thought that it's multiverse theme, you know, it's, you know, um, crossovers, people coming from the Survivor. So I thought like, you know what, um, given that the Challenge USA is airing like next week, the same episode, as the same day or the same night as the Big Other Eviction episode, I imagine that, you know, maybe they could, you know, transition into the challenge by adding like someone from the challenge on the show, like in a crossover type multiverse thing. Then I was like, you know, maybe, maybe that's not the case. Maybe I'm just like being, you know, over like speculative and like that's not going to happen. But I do see though, like potentially because they have like different multiverses in the house like the scary verse the scramble verse i could see that like every week a twist or some sort of theme or whatever being dropped that's associated with each of the multiverses like this week was scramble week and they had like out of order like nominations could be like next week could be like scary week and then i don't know what they do but like they do something associated with like scary stuff or like a scary twist or a scary power i don't know something yeah Okay. I mean, I don't know. I definitely think that that sort of twist is coming up. I mean, they're going to do that every week. It's just in terms of like bringing another house guest, I'm leaning towards no. But I mean, we both know that there's probably going to be a battle back of some sort. This is a hundred day season. Um, They want to keep the double evictions for sure. So there's just not enough week. Like you have to spread it out. So I think it'll be interesting to see how they set up this twist and whether these multiverses have to do with like you know, Corey was dis- disappeared into one. It, 
is that where the evictees go? Like, we don't know. Um, as far as I know, I have an eviction or I have an exit interview this week. You know, I have my time slot and everything, but who knows last minute, it could be what they do. What they tend to do in a battle back is sometimes just do it over email. They've done that in the past. So, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't seen a battle back because of COVID for a couple of years now. So, you know, it's a, it's a chance to bring back some early characters who might've gone out too early, but at the same time, it does it really affect the game. Has someone come back and really like gone the distance? I mean, like there, there's been like a Victor who like was second out than like right. came back twice. That there's that. There was like Judd who like came back like after Jerry. But like at the same time, most of the like times when they have a battle back, it's more so just like slows down the momentum of the game by like having us having them like just evict someone who's already been evicted like immediately afterwards. But like it's always fun, especially like if Kirsten leaves this week, like the potential of her like coming back like in the game like week six and just like winning HOH and like targeting like people. Like, that's like fun, you know? Like yeah. Potential is fun, but like probabilistically speaking, it's very unlikely. So yeah, that's fair. Every week I do want to talk a little bit about what's going on in social media. This week is like a lot of people just getting to know the players, but if you guys see anything fun, feel free to send it to me. Um, I will say I really enjoying Zach taking over Corey's Twitter account. Um, it's, and this happened, like, I, I don't know what time it was. Like, it was like one or two in the morning where Heisen was just going off about Corey and how he's like this Yale graduate and this rich kid or something. And not within like two minutes did Zach change Corey's Twitter profile and say, like, I'm going to talk to Hassam, like, wish me luck. So yeah. I'm enjoying that. Yeah, I mean, that's fun. Like, it can be hard sometimes, like, if you're a family member of someone on the show, like, to take, like, some criticism or, like, if someone's bashing your relative or, like, not bashing, but, like, yeah. against them in the game, in, like, on feeds, it could be, like, hard. So it's, like, good to see that, like, Zach's taking it, like, well and in a, like, positive way and not, like, having, you know, like, feeling bad about it so that's fun yeah at the end of the day this is a silly game show and I just like when it's more positive and not so negative um but just looking ahead so it, the veto is not being used I mean what what's the percentage that Kirsten's going home 99 percent 100 percent yeah I mean I'd say 99 just like to keep the one percent in case like something happens but like it's just like if she was okay so had she been up against Corey this week, there could have very much been an like eight to six house flip vote. Yeah. But because Riley, which was a good job on Riley's part, like knowing that Corey is someone who she, who she shouldn't have kept on the block if she wanted Kirsten gone, knowing that she, sh that she, she should have taken like Corey out is very good because like no one's going to want to take Felicia out this early in the game. Like had Corey been up, he would have, potentially just like been voted out so yeah. that's fair well as we wrap up here i'd love to know and talk about who we think is in the best position in the house and then the worst position i think best position i feel like jared's in a really good spot again i think that can change if he wants to win the hoh i'm a little worried about that but he is in the middle of two alliances if he plays his cards right that could be ve very beneficial for his you know mom and and all that um, so I think he's a, in a pretty good spot. Again, that can change. Um, anyone else you think is in a pretty good position? Like America, like no one dislikes America, right? Everyone yeah. likes her. Uh, so the thing about like Jared's position is he's in such a good position, but his position is very, very temporary because yeah. right now both sides don't, or at least Riley's side doesn't know that he is the mole. But let's say hypothetically speaking, they find out like when their entire lines gets exposed and gets dominated, they find out like, oh shit, they know about us. Who's who's been leaking information about us? And then they find out it's Jared. Then there are like seven people against him, which is not a good thing to have. But like short term, he's in a good spot because like he's been the power player because he's been put in that situation where he's like in between two alliances. So I like Jared so far. And I think he does have like some of the Siri, you know, magic in him. So yeah, he's he's like learning quickly, like, and he yeah. takes criticism well. Like when his mom's like, "Hey, pull back," he does. Yeah, I also think people who are on on like the alliances or in the alliances, but who aren't like at the forefront, like people like 
Mikol or people like America mm -hmm. who are associated with those power structures, but who aren't like big apparent threats or people who are gaming too hard. I think long term, even though their position isn't the best right now because they don't have as much power later on, like if they ping pong HOHs and then like one side wins one week, one side wins the other week, they're not going to ever get targeted until the end of the game. Meaning that they are in good positions to like make it far as long as they maintain like their strategy and like talking with people and building social bonds with people in their alliance and outside. As long as they also, they might become pawns at some point, but yeah, that's not, that's not also the worst sometimes. Yeah. Um, the other, in terms of who's in the, you know, the worst position, I think, you know, Luke doesn't really have many connections. He's kind of left out of the alliances, you know, Cerise thought about pulling him in if, if needed, but he's also, he seems expendable, right? Like easy vote if needed. I don't know. Yeah. So the thing with Luke is he's been very disconnected from the rest of the house until like, actually just like an hour ago, he's been talking to Jared a bit about like, yeah, I saw that about like possibly like working together but like besides that he's not like he's not even been on the feed he's like non-existent so like because he isn't a part of any core structure and if Kirsten goes home he's the only one left that's not on either alliance so he's very easy to just like put up there as a pawn and could potentially go home in the house flip if that happens yeah so I'm very worried about Luke I'm also worried about like as I mentioned before like Riley has been gaming like so hard and like exposing the people who she's been working with so it's like when the other side wins many people have already been saying like riley is the linchpin of that side of the house so we need to like backdoor her if she wins uh if they win power or we need to put her up with jag or put her up with Corey or cameron or someone and get her out or get one of them out so yeah. those people it's like you want to win the first HOH, but like this is one of those scenarios where it's not working out too good for her because everything is like, oh, it's Riley. It's Riley. And she's gaming hard. She's saying she's, you know, talking about week three already. And it's like, yeah. okay, we got to slow down a little bit. Um, the funny thing is, had she like one HOH and just like included Sri and Jared in that alliance, could have very easily just like been a steamroll alliance. And then the other side would have been just like unaware of anything. But because but that's not of, fun. <laughs> that's not fun, but like strategically speaking, you know, like yeah, I understand, but yeah. I like how it turned out because I need this like split house. Same, same, um, same. I love split houses. And yeah. I think the the other person is obviously we talked about him is Corey. Like uh he doesn't yeah. think he's long for this game. I mean he okay. So the thing with players like Corey is that they usually get targeted early, but then if they make it past the few weeks, they're like very good candidates to win so like what Corey needs to do is he needs to try to do damage control with the other side of the house so they don't hate him as much as they do and once he can just like you know um uh, make better connections with like people like Heisim and Suri and like that side and they don't like actively target him then he can sort of take over Jared's spot and play the middle either with Jared or like instead of him if it happens to be yeah, no, I think that's totally fair. D yeah, these next few weeks will be key. And if he stays, he might have a shot. Um, but he better stay away from Surrey. That's all I gotta say. Yes, <laughs> I agree. But yeah, I feel like we covered the basics of what's been going on. And the episode, like we said, didn't really tell us too much. Um, anything else that you think we missed? Um, Felicia, more Felicia. <laughs> more Felicia. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Okay, all about yes. her. Nothing um, else. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining the Sunday episode. We'll be back every Sunday night just to break down everything for you. Um, and then Wednesdays, I will have a winner every single week. We'll be doing an interview with them. So Ooh. keep an eye. Yes. So what are you having on next week, Sharon? Well, I'm not going to announce it yet, but oh. be sure to check my Twitter. That's where I'll be posting. And then I'll be asking people for questions. Um, but I just think it's fun to talk to winners of the show. So I lined up a really good, you know, guest list of winners over the next few weeks Ooh. so i'm super excited about um, that um yeah. you make sure to follow the podcast at exclusively pod on all platforms and you know obviously i'm at sharon tharpson do you want to plug your instagram yeah you can follow me on instagram okay it's somewhere here like somewhere we oh. got it at sanon yeah. fight um okay. <laughs> 
Wait, speaking of winners, are okay. you gonna get like the like winners like Mike Boogie on 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 the podcast or no? Um, I I think he's busy. What do you mean he's busy? What could he What could he be doing right now? Do you have any tea to spill, Sharon? No, any, any no, no, no. Any no, no. exclusives? No, uh, he's busy. Let's just say that. He's busy doing what? Busy in jail or? Okay, well, anyway, be sure to like, <laughs> subscribe, and leave a five-star review if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you yes, later in the week. Yes.